Let's get a practice question about break-even point, degree of operating leverage, degree of financial leverage, and degree of total leverage. Let's read the question together. Pioneer Limited produces markers with a constant selling price of $10 per marker. Therefore, we know that our price is $10 per marker. Let's get the variables that was mentioned in the question first. The firm has a fixed cost of 100000 and the variable cost per unit is $6. The firm is financed by 60% of debt and 40% in equity. So do I need to give you these two percentages? No, I could give you only the debt percentage, which is 60%. If you'd like to get equity, get one minus debt percentage or debt ratio. So you don't need to get both of them. With 10,000 ordinary shares, so number of shares or shares outstanding is 10,000. The firm's assets are valued at 1 million. So the value of asset is 1 million and the firm pays a tax rate of 30%. The firm pays annual interest rate, the cost of that is 5%. So the first part of the question is calculate the break-even volume of markers sales. Will Pioneer Limited be profitable at a production of 20,000 markers? Will Pioneer Limited be profitable at production of 30,000 markers? Calculate EBIT and earning per share of Pioneer Limited at sales volumes of 35,000 and 45,000 markers, which means form the income statement at these two quantities, 35,000 and 45,000 markers. Then calculate the degree of operating leverage of Pioneer Limited at a volume of sales 35,000 markers. The next part of the question is calculate the degree of financial leverage of Pioneer Limited at a volume of sales of 35,000 markers. The last point is calculate the degree of total leverage at a volume of sales of 35,000 thousand markers. So let's start with the first part of the question, which is calculate the break even point. So what is the formula of break even point? Our break even point is equal to fixed cost divided by price minus variable cost per unit. We said that what's our fixed cost from the question? 100,000. So I write 100,000 divided by what is the price? $10 minus what is the variable cost per unit? 6. So our formula will be 100,000 divided by 10 minus 6, this will give us 25,000. So what do we mean by 25,000? It means that our sales is equal to operating cost, which includes fixed cost and variable cost, total fixed cost and total variable cost. Consequently, it means that our EBIT, our earnings before interest and tax is equal to zero. Therefore, at this quantity, we have a break even point. The second part of the question, Will Pioneer Limited be profitable at a production of 20,000 markers? Remember, what was our break-even point? Our break-even point is 25,000. So if we're going to produce less than our break-even point, what does it mean? It means that we make a loss. The next part of the question is, will Pioneer Limited be profitable at a production of 30,000 markers? We know that our break-even point, which we calculated in the first point, is 25,000. So 30,000 is bigger than our break-even point. Consequently, if we produce at a quantity above our break-even point, it means that we make a gain. The next part of the question is we need to calculate our EBIT and earning per share at two quantities, 35,000 and 45,000. So these are the formulas that we're going to use, which is the sales it's equal to price times quantity. Our operating cost, it's fixed cost plus variable cost per unit multiplied by quantity. Our EBIT is sales minus operating cost. Our interest expense is equal to debt times our interest rate. How do we calculate debt? Our debt is percentage of debt or debt ratio multiplied by assets multiplied by interest rate. How are we going to calculate earnings before tax? It's EBIT minus interest expense. How do we going to calculate taxes? It's tax rate times earnings before tax. How do we calculate net income? It's earnings before tax minus taxes. How are we going to calculate earning per share? It's net income divided by shares outstanding. Therefore, let's look here. What is the quantity? 35,000 and 45,000. What is the price? 10 and 10. So 35,000 times 10, it will give you 30, 350,000. What's our fixed cost? 100,000. What's our variable cost? Get variable cost per unit multiplied by the quantity. What's our variable cost per unit? In the question, it was six. 
so it will be 6 multiplied by the quantity 35,000 it will give you 210,000 what will be our operating cost our operating cost is fixed cost plus variable cost 100,000 plus 210,000 it will give you 310,000 what will be our EBIT our EBIT is sales minus operating cost so 350,000 minus 310,000 it will give us 40,000 minus interest what would be our interest we said that our interest is our asset times percentage of debt times cost of debt we said that in the question what's our assets our assets is 1 million what's the percentage of debt 60 percent what's our cost of debt 5 percent so it will be 1 million our interest is 1 million times 60% times 5%. So this will give us an interest of 30,000. What will be our earnings before tax? It's EBIT minus interest. 40,000 minus 30,000, it will give us 10,000. Taxes is 30%. So 30% times 10,000, it will be 3,000. Then what will be our net income? It's our earnings before tax minus taxes. 10,000 minus 3,000, it will be 7,000. What's the number of shares or shares outstanding? 10,000. So 7,000 divided by 10,000, it will give us 0.7. And you do the same at the quantity of 45,000. So the next part of the question is calculate the degree of operating leverage at a quantity of 35,000. So do you remember the formula of the degree of operating leverage? The formula of the degree of operating leverage is quantity multiplied by the price minus variable cost per unit divided by the quantity multiplied by price minus variable cost per unit all of this minus fixed cost therefore what's our quantity 35,000 multiplied by open bracket what's the price 10 minus what's the variable cost per unit 6 close bracket divided by repeat the same again quantity is 35,000 multiplied by open bracket price of 10 minus variable cost per unit which is 6 close bracket minus fixed cost which is 100,000 so this will give us a degree of operating leverage of 3.5. We said that the higher the degree of operating leverage, the higher the business risk. So here we used only one quantity. Can we calculate the degree of operating leverage using two quantities? Yes, we can. Do you remember our formula? We said that our degree of operating leverage is percentage change of EBIT divided by percentage change of sales which is the new EBIT minus old EBIT divided by old EBIT. All of this divided by new sales minus old sales divided by sales. So let's do the same here. Where is our new EBIT? 80,000 minus what's our old EBIT? 40,000 divided by old EBIT? 40,000. All of this divided by new sales? 450,000 divided by minus old sales, which is 350,000 divided by old sales, which is 350,000. So if we use it here, this will give us a degree of operating leverage of 3.5 which is the same but which one is easier just use the first formula because it's easier you just substitute in one formula and you get it you don't need to calculate two income statements in order to be able to use this formula which means you need two quantities the next part of the question is calculate the degree of financial leverage of pioneer limited at a volume of sales of 35,000. We said that if we have only one quantity and would like to use a formula, our formula will be degree of financial leverage equal to EBIT divided by EBIT minus interest. What's our EBIT? 40,000 divided by EBIT of 40,000 minus interest amount of 30,000. This will give us a degree of financial leverage equal to 4. Remember, the higher the degree of financial leverage, the higher the financial risk. So, can we calculate degree of financial leverage based on the definition, which means when we have two quantities? Yes, we can. So what is the formula? Degree of financial leverage is equal to percentage change of earning per share divided by percentage change of EBIT. What is the formula of percentage change in earning per share? It's earning per share new minus earning per share old divided by earning per share old. All of these divided by EBIT new minus EBIT old divided by EBIT old. So let's get it here. Where is our new earning per share? 3.5 minus old earning per share 0.7 divided by old earning per share which is 0.7 all of this divided by our new EBIT 80,000 minus old EBIT 40,000 divided by old EBIT 
40,000. So this will give us our degree of financial leverage, which is four, which is exactly the same as we calculated before. So you can use either formula, but the easier one is just use the simple formula where you use only one quantity. You don't need to calculate two income statements with two quantities. The reason I showed to you is I want to show you different ways of calculation and both of them will give you exactly the same value. So what will be our last part of the question? Calculate the degree of total leverage of Pioneer Limited at a volume of sales of 35,000. We know that the degree of total leverage is equal to degree of operating leverage multiplied by degree of financial leverage. So our degree of operating leverage is 3.5 times the degree of financial leverage is 4. This will give us 14. Can we calculate it using the two, the one formula? Yes, we can. Remember what's the formula of the degree of total leverage? It's a quantity multiplied by price minus variable cost per unit divided by quantity multiplied by open bracket price minus variable cost per unit close bracket minus fixed cost minus interest. So what is the quantity? 35,000 multiplied by what is the price? 10 minus variable cost per unit, which is six divided by repeat it again. Quantity of 35,000 multiplied by open bracket price of 10 minus variable cost per unit close bracket minus fixed cost, which is 100,000 minus our interest from income statement, what was our interest? It was 30,000. So this will give us a degree of total leverage of 14, which is exactly the same as the previous one that we calculated. 